Hello and welcome aboard everybody. It's Rob from PMDG. Back with another tutorial for our Douglas DC-6 from Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, last time I told you we were going to do a takeoff this time, but you also recall I told you never trust the check airman. We're making a slight detour into the run-up block to go through a few technical details of the run-up process. So, let's get started. The first step in the run-up is to just make a quick scan across the gauges, make sure things look good. Pretty much what you want to see is all engines indicating about the same. Now our oil pressure is a little bit low, so I'm going to raise the RPM to about 900 RPM there, and that'll get the oil pressure back up around 35, 40 PSI, which is plenty good for sitting here at idle power. Other things you want to just take a quick look at, make sure your oil temps are above 40 and Make sure your cylinder head temperatures down here on the left are not up in the yellow arc at all. First thing we're going to be doing is a propeller governor check. This is your master propeller controller. It will control all four propellers for you. This box right here is a mechanical device that allows you to have all four propellers controlled through that single prop lever. To put it another way, this prop lever works through the mechanical innards of this box in order to provide you with some automated control for all four engines. You'll control RPM using this knob by moving it back and forth most of the time. But there is some automated control for each individual propeller if you needed to fine tune things. So that's what we're gonna be testing right now. We'll start out by bringing the RPM up to around 1600 RPM. A little bit of adjustment there, we can get it fairly close. You don't have to be scientifically precise. Really what we're looking for is to measure that things are controlling properly. Go ahead and hit your throttle locks. That'll keep you from accidentally moving the throttles. Now, we're gonna then move the master propeller controller aft like this and watch to see that the propellers actually go to their minimum governing speed, which is about 1200 to 1250 RPM. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the propeller control out of automatic, and we're gonna set it to manual. Then move each of these individual propeller switches forward, and we're instructing each propeller to accelerate again. And what it's going to do is go back to the speed that we had set previously, which is about 1600 RPM. Now we're going to go and check that we can control them to slow them down as well. So we'll pull these switches to decrease. This takes a couple of seconds while the mechanical innards sort of sort themselves out. But with these switches in decrease, we're waiting to see these four blue lights come back on and also that the RPM does what we instructed, which is to go back down to minimum governing speed at 1250 RPM. As you can see, we get the four blue lights. That tells us that the box believes it has control of those propellers, so all is now well. So we'll put these switches back in the neutral position, and we're going to switch control from manual mode to automated based on the number two engine. Now the box is using the speed of number two engine to govern all four engines. So we move the master controller forward. We should see all four engines follow it. And they're all back up at about 1600 now. That might seem a little bit confusing. We're gonna cover this in great detail in an advanced tutorial, but I wanted you to see how the controller box is linking itself to either engine three or to engine two in order to provide you with control of all four engines through that master propeller knob. Most of the time, you're gonna have that switch set in number three auto, and you're gonna use the big white cue ball to set your RPM, and that'll be the end of it. Now we're gonna do a check of the manual propeller feathering system. These red buttons control a pump that pushes oil into the prop dome in order to feather the propeller in the event we need to. This test, what we're looking for is, after we push the button, we want to see the engine RPM start to fall off, and then we want to pull that button out really quickly. The best way to do this is use your center mouse wheel knob, roll it forward to push the button, roll it backward to pull the button out. I push the button, you see the RPM, I roll the wheel backward to pull it out. 
roll it forward, push the button, glance down, see the RPM, pull it back out. You do want to do this quickly. And the reason why you want to do it quickly is pushing these propellers into the feather position is kind of hard on the engine. But it's extremely important to know that these things are working because if you need them, you need them. All right. See? Look at that. Check's done. Isn't that simple? All right. Next, we're going to check the propeller synchronization system. This is the system that senses the RPM of the propellers and keeps them all in phase with one another in order to ensure that you don't hear that sort of warbling sound in flight that's kind of annoying. Now, the way we're going to run this test is by bringing the manifold pressure up to 25 inches, and then we're going to come down and we're going to be using the synchronization switch, which is located right here on this box. And in order to do this test, just unlock your throttles if you locked them from the previous test. That'll make your life a little bit simpler. But we're going to bring the RP or the manifold pressure up to 25 inches of manifold pressure. And you can see, just bring it up there nice and slowly. You should see the propellers settle in around 2050 to 2100 RPM, somewhere in there, depending on conditions. And that's about what it should look like for you. Engine synchronization is controlled primarily with the master knob here, but it functions off of either engine number two or engine number three. So we're going to test both. Let's start off by setting the switch to auto number three. That will allow us to test the synchronization on the number three engine first. And we'll do that by coming up here and we see we've got the engines running about 2050 RPM. So we're going to use our master prop lever knob, and I'm pulling it back just slightly till we get to about 1950 RPM, which is right about there. So you can see now that that knob has come back. Now what I want to do is push the resynchronize button. And what I'm doing is telling the system, this is the RPM I want you to govern the engines toward. Then what we're going to do is draw engine number three back because that's the controlling engine. So we want to make sure that all the engines don't follow the number three throttle. So we can draw that back and you can see that the number three engine has started to slow down, but the number four and the number one and two engines have remained at that 1950 RPM. That tells us that it's working. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same test by switching us over to auto number two so that we can check to make sure that, that the same system works properly on engine number two. One little hint here that I'll teach you. When you go to grab the throttle like this, um, sorry, wrong button. When you go to grab the throttle and pull it back, I use my mouse wheel. If you hold the shift key down on your keyboard while you roll the mouse wheel, you get uh, much faster control than just rolling the mouse wheel. So you can see that the RPM for our engines has uh, has behaved appropriately. So now we set that back to number three auto because that's usually the one that you leave it set to just for normal day-to-day -day operations. Some airlines will move it back and forth between them during flight or in subsequent flights, but we'll just leave it over there. Okay, now let's get everything reset. Pull your throttles to idle. Push your, your propeller controller full forward. You'll see your blue lights come on. Now it's time to move on to the next test in the run-up. This test is to test the propeller reversing system. We want to make sure that the props go in and out of reverse cleanly without getting hung up. We do this by pulling on the reverse lever and then checking to see that these orange lights come on. So we pull the reverse lever down, we add a little bit of throttle. As the propellers go into reverse, those orange lights come on, so we know we've got reverse. Pull the power to idle. This lever should auto-clutch back to a neutral position. Now, bring your throttles forward. Get up to about 25 inches of manifold pressure just to make sure that none of those orange lights come back on again. If it comes back on, that means you got a propeller hung up. You really don't want to try taking off like that. That would be a little bit more adventurous than we really care to get. All right. Get your throttles back to idle, and we can move on to testing the magnetos. The magnetos are essentially the ignition system for the engines. We'll go into this in a lot of detail in the advanced tutorial. What you need to understand is that each engine has 
two ignition systems, a left and a right. So what we want to do is make sure that they're both operating. We do that by using these switches right here. These are your ignition switches. You can see that it's got a right, a left, and a both position. The position the switch is in tells you which ignition system is running. If both of them are running, we'll see normal RPM. If you set it to either the left or the right system, the RPM will fall off generally about 100 RPM due to less efficient burning of the fuel inside the cylinders. So this is how we test it. We start out by bringing the manifold pressure up to about 30 inches of manifold pressure. Now this is a critical power setting in that it allows us to check a number of different things to tell us that the engine ignition system is working properly. First off, we want to look and make sure we can get to 30 inches of manifold pressure. We can see that we did here. Now, the fuel flow for each engine should be about the same, and it should be right around 600 pounds per hour, and it'll vary a little bit depending on the engine. You can see that the fuel pressures are just about the same, and the RPM should be in the 2100 to 2250 range, kind of in there. You should also see that your torque readings, these BMEPs up here, they should all be around 140, give or take a little bit. All right, so we're going to come up here to the overhead. Now, the way we're going to run this test is by rotating these switches, and we'll do engine one and engine three first and we set them on the left ignition harness. Now, we should see that engine one and engine three both fall off about 100 RPM. That's because they're only using a single ignition system. It's less efficient. It burns the fuel less efficiently. When we set them back to both, the RPM recovers. We'll now set them, we'll go two clicks, and we'll set them to the right ignition system, glance back down. We see them fall off 100 RPM. Great, it's going exactly what we want. Bring it back to both, we should see both engines go back to their full RPM, and they do. All right. Now, let's do engines two and four. Same process. We're going to set the left, or left ignition system on both engines. They should both fall off about 100 RPM. They do. Glance back up, go back to both. And going back to both is important. You don't just want to go from left and then to right. You want to go back to both to make sure that it recovers between each ignition system test. So we've got both set to the right system now. They fall off about 100 RPM. Looks good. We can go ahead and rotate those back to both and give one more glance down to make sure that the RPMs recovered, and they did. So we know our ignition system is healthy. That tells us we'll get full takeoff power when we get out on the runway, and that's pretty good. You notice I started to pull the power out there back to idle because I forgot one test. We have a water injection system on this airplane. We want to test that these pumps actually work. So we're going to turn, turn them on for engines one and three. We'll glance back down here and we want to see that we have about 29 inches of pressure on each of those gauges. Turn them off up here, turn them back on here, glance back down and make sure engines two and four have it. They do. I almost forgot this test because we don't have water injection on the DC-3, so forgive me. So now we know that the water injection pumps work. When we actually bring the engines up to take off power, these green lights will come on and we'll also see a, a very subtle change in the fuel flow. Using that water injection allows us to generate a lot more power through the engines, and we'll talk about that in a subsequent advanced tutorial. But uh, not seeing these green lights come on at this phase of the test, that is normal. It's worth noting that in some DC-6 installations, those green lights will come on to show that the water pumps are working. This installation that we have modeled, you'll get those green lights when the water is actually being injected into the engines and those valves have opened appropriately. So don't let that throw you off if you've got a DC-6 manual from a different airline with a different system. Up next... We're going to test the automatic feathering system. This is going to be a really rapid test. This is hard to do in the computer. It's much easier to do in real life. It's tough to do in the sim because we don't have fingers and the ability to look around really quickly. So you're going to see me bouncing back and forth between views really fast. But here's the point of the test. 
auto feather is designed to ensure that if an engine quits on us at takeoff, the automatic RPM sensing system will roll that propeller right into feather so that it doesn't add drag. The way we test this, bring the engines up to field elevation pressure, which is 30 inches of manifold pressure in this case. Again, we should see around 2150 to 2200 RPM. Now, I'm going to use my mouse wheel to roll forward and back like we did previously, but I'm going to first turn the test system on. Now you'll see these four green lights. That tells us that the auto feather system is active. Then I'm going to go and take this test button and I'm going to push it up like that. Now I'm going to come down to the instrument view and I'm going to show you a little secret in, in how I figured out how to make this work first is just move yourself back a little bit so you can see your throttles. Now I'm going to use my mouse wheel and I'm going to roll this throttle back and as we roll the throttle back we'll see the manifold pressure fall off, we'll see the RPM start to fall off. When manifold pressure starts to roll back the auto feather system should kick in and take over that propeller and start driving it toward feather and that's going to turn this red light on and it's going to turn the green lights off to indicate that it is no longer functioning because it has already grabbed one engine to feather it. So, this is going to get exciting quickly. Ready? Watch closely. All right, let me back up. I'm going to use my mouse wheel and the shift button to pull this throttle back. Now you can see the RPM starting to fall off rapidly. That red button being illuminated means that that engine is feathering. And you'll notice that all the green lights turned off. That's because the system is only going to feather one engine. If you have a really bad day and you fail two engines on a takeoff, you're going to have to do the second one manually. Just remember that. And yeah, I'll file that one away for some fun for a later tutorial. All right. We've now got all four engines back running at field elevation. We're going to hit reset on this switch here. So push it into the reset position and then we'll rearm it. All the green lights come on. And now we'll go back down. We'll Grab onto the number two throttle and using the scroll wheel and the shift key, we'll pull this one back. We see the RPM falling off. The feather button is illuminated. Pull it out. All the green lights are off. So we know that that's working as well. Uh, a little hint as you're resetting the throttle so you don't have to actually have to scroll it all forward. Just jiggle your hardware throttle just a teeny bit and it will grab onto it and set them all back again for you. All right, let's test the number three feather. Here we go. This gets a little tedious doing it on the computer. There's really uh, no way to do this in a better fashion than this because, you know, again, we don't have fingers inside the sim. Maybe one day they'll invent a haptic glove for us that'll really make this a lot more fun. And we've got one more to do here, so we'll just glance up. We'll Turn that one off, reset the system, turn it back on. We've got four green lights, turn number four on test, come down here, and we'll pull the number four throttle to idle. We can see RPM falling off, reach up, grab that button, pull it all the way out, turn the test switch off, and wiggle the throttle a little bit just to get the RPM to come back up. And now we can just pull the power to idle, the auto feather system passed its test. Now that's a very basic engine run up. It should take you less than five minutes to do. And, and let me show you why. If you look at the cylinder head temperatures, these are the two gauges on the lower left right here. You'll notice that we're running fairly hot. Hot is bad. Hot's always bad. So we want to try to keep this test pretty quickly, especially pretty quick, especially in the summertime, because the more heat you store in those engines, the tougher the takeoff's going to be on the engines, and we don't want that either. So speaking of takeoffs, I promised you last time the next one was going to be takeoffs. This time I mean it. So thanks for flying PMDG. Fly safely, be well, look after one another, and see you real soon.